Well, good morning, everybody, or good morning from the Netherlands, and a good day from wherever you are in the world, and welcome to our Mobile Viewpoint webinar, where today we'll be talking about our AI solution, the IQ Sports Producer. Um, it's been the end of a long week. We've been doing webinars every day. This is part of our post-IBC uh, showcase that we've been doing on different webinars all week. So today, this morning, and again this afternoon, we'll be discussing the IQSP. Uh, and the intention is to get quite deep and dirty. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Mark Andrews. I'm a global sales manager here at Mobile Viewpoint. Uh, Michelle, would you like to? Yes, uh, Mark. Uh, my name is Michel Weiss, managing director of Mobile Viewpoint. And here together with Mark, we talk to you about IQ Sport Producer. Fabulous. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping to start with. Everyone's on mute. No one can hear you, so don't worry about noise. But as we go on, if questions come to mind, at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. So if you've got a question, feel free just to write it down in the box and we'll address it at the end. Uh, my intention is to have a uh, share my screen, do a short PowerPoint presentation, uh, and also show some examples of the sports in action as well. Um, but to start with, IQSP, um, well, maybe a bit about Mobile Viewpoint first, for those of you who don't know of us. So for the last 10 years, uh, Dutch company Mobile Viewpoint have been innovators in solutions for outside broadcast, specifically technology for live streaming over 3G, 4G, and now 5G networks. Um, so video contribution, connect to the camera, H.265 encoding, and then at the receiving end, they can then uh, obviously take their, their live stream a second later. So, so big use, user cases in things like news gathering, uh, but also sports production. So we've taken a lot of this sort of sports experience and our broadcast experience. And in the last sort of year, year and a half, we've been developing a couple of AI solutions, one of which is the IQ Sports Producer, and taking our broadcast knowledge and really applying it uh, to this sort of new technology. Um, and the whole idea is to make really compelling productions for use by, um, by broadcasters, but also other grassroots sports as well. So uh, whether you, um, whether it's sort of League One, League Two, or those more grassroots sports, so the idea is to really create an affordable solution for those guys. So perhaps what we're not is trying to replace that sort of tier one production team that go to site, they've got the production crew, the OB truck, uh, the Premiership football, for example. They do have money, they do have resource to create this football, uh, the, the, the live production. Um, but really those sort of lower leagues where maybe they don't have the resource to do that, what the AI is enabling is really cost-effective uh, professional productions around sports. And Michelle, what, what sort of sports are we supporting? There's a whole range of sports. That yeah, we do, of course, uh, soccer, but that's almost uh, the easy sport, I would say, these days. Yeah. Now, we also support uh, ice hockey, uh, floorball, handball, uh, volleyball. Uh, we have also in a velodrome, so cycling in a velodrome we support now. And we also are working uh, in the same type of ho horse racing, so that we track horses doing on an oval running and also horse jumping, so in a square and then they jump over those fences. And what else we have? Handball, floorball, we've mentioned, I guess. Yeah, yeah, floorball. Yeah. So, um, and, I, and, I, and I guess the whole point is, and I, and I guess it's, it's very relevant in these times, is that there's not a single camera person on site. So um, you have a camera, um, and here we have a, an example of the of the X cam, which you can see. Uh, let me just move this way a bit. There mm -hmm. we go. Um, so this camera is really sitting above the field of play, uh, and the whole point is there are no camera people on site. The AI is doing everything. But uh, let me begin by sharing my screen, and I'll give you a little bit of an overview. So the camera I mentioned, so this sits above the sports pitch. It could be indoors, can be outdoors. Um, and the whole point is, it's a panoramic camera. So with the X-Cam we're showing there, we have four 4K uh, cameras overlooking the field of play uh, and basically capturing everything. So we, we create this um, stitched together uh, warped image, which we then have an, a server on site, which de-warps uh, de it um, and then the whole idea like we're capturing the whole of the panoramic the whole panoramic view of the pitch but in fact with the action the camera the AI sorry will follow the action of the ball and the players themselves so 
for example, it's a cutout, I call it. It's like a, a virtual software cutout of the action, which is following the players. So there are no moving parts. And a little bit of extra, we can also create multiple streams. So you may have the AI creating your primary stream. And the whole idea is, is you can schedule this game to start remotely. You can actually walk away and you don't actually have to be there while you're live streaming. But in many cases, and some more of our sort of top end broadcast customers, they actually want to create multiple streams. So you may have the AI as your primary stream, but you also have the ability to create extra streams as well. And a little bit later, Michelle's going to go a little bit more into sort of the management platform, how we do this. So if you want to create extra streams, you can do that as well. So as well as the camera on site, we also have the server on site uh, as well. It's connected to the camera just through standard ethernet. In fact, the camera's uh, powered through, through the ethernet as well. And from that, you can then decide which streams you'd want to forward. So you can just forward one, you can forward them all. And we have various player options as well, which I'll talk about in a second. So in terms of the workflow, um, the XCAM sits above the field of play. We have the server. And then we have Link Matrix as well. So what is Link Matrix? Link Matrix is our management portal. It's freely available, it's fully hosted. You access it just through a standard browser, so you can access it from, from your office, from the stadium, from home, wherever you need to be. Um, and one of the user case scenarios is in fact, and this kind of is more for, for broadcast workflows, where at the receiving end, they will have a decoder back at the broadcast center. And from here, they can create standard HD SDI streams, or if they wish, they can create IP streams as well, which maybe they use for an OTT play out or maybe social media, wherever they want to push the IP stream. And we can create them both simultaneously. So one thing I will say is that the XCAM itself, the reason we designed and built it ourselves is because traditionally a lot of, the, a lot of our competitors, they're just using surveillance cameras. They're very low quality. They're okay for web streaming, but they're not really of a standard that can be used for a broadcaster. So full 60 frames per second, no drop frames. And in fact, that's what I, when I started, we came from a broadcast background and we're really taking that sort of knowledge and intelligence that we have and, and creating a, a broadcast quality uh, solution. However, for those of you who are interested in only web streaming, um, we do have a solution for that. So we have the Hikvision camera, which provides a 30 frames per second surveillance camera. Again, we have the server on site. And, and rather going to a decoder, actually you have the ability to decode in the cloud. So via our Link Matrix platform, we have a decoder there as well. And from there, you can then direct your stream to social media, or if you're using any sort of uh, CDN or whatever OTT player that supports you know, IP streams such as RTMP, RTSP, NDI, then we can support that as well. So we have a couple of packages. Um, let me just go back to that. So we, we talked about the light, which is in the previous, which is our web streaming. But then uh, we have these range of packages. We have the light, we have the pro, we have the premium. And basically they go up with more feature functionality for each level that you look at. And obviously the price goes up accordingly. So it just depends on what your needs are um, and, and budget, obviously. And then we're happy to talk to you about what best suits you. Yeah, we want to make sure that we provide a solution for everybody. Yep. So if you really go for the grassroots sport or really the, the fifth league or your local club wants to do this, then of course this, uh, this security camera solution is more than enough. It works very good. Only yeah, the quality is good for, for browsing. If you really want to go back to a TV channel, then you need to have the pro version with actually a 60, 50 frames camera and really appropriate lenses. So just in, in terms of a quick schematic as well. So here we have the camera. It's connected... So, well, basically, it's all connected via, via Ethernet. Um, typically, you'd have the camera, if you can, connected by a cable, and you can power that accordingly. But there is a limit on Ethernet of around about 100 meters. So if you are in a situation where we need to put cameras further away, then we also can put up line of sight dishes with Wi-Fi. Yeah, we have uh, directional Wi-Fi dishes. And of course, there are also fiber co converters. So you go Ethernet to fiber, and then you lay out the fiber cable. But that's something we can discuss in your specific situation. And I think you have also your local integrator who is uh, very good in doing this type of, of uh, solving this type of problems. But by default, we do everything over power over Ethernet. So actually from the server, there's a cable that is powered by a PoE switch, goes to the camera. And yeah, it's very easy to set up actually. Yeah. 
Well, we should have a quick drum roll here. And after this slide, I'm going to show you some examples. But um, drum roll. We are, are launching a, a brand new XCAM. So the XCAM that we have here is a, a, a is, is our de facto sort of. Um, Can you show it? Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. So this is the XCAM here. So we have the, the, the four different lenses, uh, each one 4K. Um, it has venting inbuilt as well. It's designed to be weatherproof. It can stand outside. Uh, the PUE connector, so there's the PUE. But oh. Michelle, perhaps it's worth mentioning what's, what's, what's the new, the, the next XCAM Pro that we have here? Uh, the next, uh, wait a minute. Uh, but yes, the, the XCAM Pro is actually, it's, it's the same design as the XCAM. But uh, the lenses are different. So uh, what you will see is the more longer camera blocks, and it houses an, actually an, a real lens, which you can elect a motorized lens, which you can uh, remotely control to set up your your, your panorama. Because uh, yeah, I, I, everybody who watches this webinar, of course, is not used to this whole technology. But when you start working with this type of panoramic camera, as you notice, as soon as the farther you go from the pitch, the more part of your panorama becomes air or the ceiling of the venue or so the, the, the pixels really covering the, the pitch where you want to digitally zoom in gets less and less. So you have to zoom in. Now, the, the, the existing X cam has, has fixed lenses, so you have to screw on different lenses as you're far away. And it's not a problem when you're, of course, setting up your solution for a fixed eh, in, in a hall of a venue. But if you want to be mobile, so every, yeah, every day in another venue, then, of course, you have to change those, those zooms very quickly. So with this camera, you can almost remotely zoom in, zoom out, and create the, the perfect panorama that really covers almost 80% of the pitch and enables you to really do a very nice zoom in, zoom out digitally without losing quality. Yeah. Is that, uh, you know, a lot of our competitors, they have fixed surveillance, and actually they, a lot of the pixels are wasted. Yeah, pixel, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all air or at the ceiling yeah. or at a uh, stand. They, they, they cannot do anything with it. And with this possibility, we can create a higher quality. And on top of that, there is also a real iris in, in, in the camera. So uh, at the moment, of course, with, with digital cameras, the iris is a kind of digital. And of course, that, that also gives a lesser quality. And with a real iris, you can get a far higher result in the end. And of course, that's very important for our TV customers. Absolutely. So I'm all time repeating the security cameras are not bad at all. Very good for streaming and a very nice price solution. I'm honest about that. But if you really want to go for the higher end, and we see that they're coming on more and more. Now the AI technology became so good when you look at, at the virtual cameraman, man, it looks really like a real cameraman. So you see more and more attention from TV channels to really use this on TV. So what I would like to show you is some examples. And actually, the examples I'm going to show you are actually done with a surveillance camera. So you can see. So here, this is all uh, run, run by IQSP, not a single cameraman in sight. And also, you'll be able to see we can do the scoreboard overlays. You can do graphical overlays and this sort of stuff as well. So... Um, I'm going to start with the uh, basketball. Let me just make that big. Yeah, so this is a good example of the camera. I had to be behind in the back of the stand, so it's a bit far away from the pitch. So yeah, yeah. In this case, many pixels are indeed uh, the ceiling. I just want to hasten a warning. If it is a little bit blocky at our end, it's quite smooth. But one of the disadvantages of using Zoom is that they do. Uh, transcode everything themselves, so it might be a little bit. Yeah, blocky. you have a very low frame rate on Zoom, so it probably shocks. But uh, we can uh, share with you the links to YouTube where you can see the, uh, yeah, the, the original video, so to say. Yeah, so that's the basketball. But um, one of the other ones, and, and this is available on a, a YouTube channel, so you can all see this. We also have this one, which is actually uh, the Ladies League. Uh, this one is being used in Manchester City, actually, to show the Ladies League. So we have a, a production partner there known as Timeline. They do a lot of work for BT Sport in terms of the premiership development. But they were sort of looking for a solution for those sort of lower leagues, the women's football, the youth sports, that kind of thing, which often don't have the budget or the resource to be able to get a so camera. This specific through. league is still done real camera, man, but it was just a test ground to, to see yeah. how what we can do with even lower leagues. And then the, the end of this video is also that we really highlight the, the detected ball. So the AI uh, finds the ball. And as soon as it finds it, we get a red block over it. So that yeah, gets you understanding actually how the technology works. And then the other one, which I always find very interesting, is the ice hockey. Um, and, the, and here, again, we've, we've just put the red dot overlay just to show what the AI is looking at. But the thing about ice hockey is that you have a very small puck. It's, it's on, a, on a white background. Um, and it's going very, very fast. 
But the point is the AI can still track that despite the fact it's going quick. So the, this, this enables us to, uh, yeah, with our good AI, I think I'm, I'm really proud of it, enables us also to do those, yeah, perhaps minority sports or sports that are in the past very difficult to do automatic. Uh, also be able to do it now. And then floorball, we talk about it later, uh, is a kind of indoor ice hockey without ice with a very small ball. We're able to do that now. And uh, yeah, I think it's a in very interesting opportunity. This handball, this is handball yeah. yeah, this is actually again a, a big ball, so that makes it uh, easier to track from AI perspective. But yeah, it's, it's the same concept as, as we've shown a few times. We find the ball and then of course we, we create a virtual cutout. It actually makes the cameraman. Sure, I wonder if we have um, a handball thing here. Probably not. But we, we, we've got rugby as well, that's something else. But if you, if you go to our, uh, our site, then uh, we can, uh, I can uh, let you know the uh, URL. The URL. That was the word I was looking for. So now I'm just going to share again my PowerPoint. Just finish off this before we, uh, Michelle then talks a little bit more about the management platform. So the other thing about, I always think a professional presentation is, is actually the audio. So the audio for me is a compelling part of the whole visual thing. Um, so visual you're looking, but the fact you can hear things. So we've actually developed our own sort of panoramic type Audio microphone device. Yeah, yeah microphone array we call it yes so as you can see there's actually a, a four dish type microphones so they due to the dish uh, design it gets directional and actually we, we follow the audio like the ball so we capturing the microphone actually you do also directional microphone calculation so we capture the audio coming from the direction from the ball and it's also overcomes that you hear of course people talking below the camera which happens with a normal uh, direct omnidirectional microphone and of course, uh, we also enable you to input audio, of course, from a real microphone, so you can have a commentator on site. But this really gives you real ambient sound from, from, the, from the pitch and really what you want to, want to hear, not the people talking below and around the pitch, but really people in the pitch. Sure. And audio is very important. I think we, we heard from many directors that audio is 50% of the whole, the whole image watching experience. And that's also why you see now this, this artificial audio getting in all those matches from those empty stadiums. But to be honest, I, maybe it's a bit controversial for me to say, but I, I quite enjoy listening to the players shout at each other on the pitch without the crowd. So it's, it, it gives it a new element of, of viewing experience. You've yeah. got, got the noise, but actually you can hear everybody shouting at each other. So um, I guess it's a personal preference. But I've noticed they've turned the crowd down recently as well on some of these matches. Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit too much. You think, okay, who's yelling over here? It costs a bit annoying. Yeah. But that's also for those broadcasters and production companies a little bit to play around with to see how people like it or they dislike it. Yeah, that's true. But I think it, it is not bad at all. And of course, we can also do the same thing, of course. If okay. you want, we can also generate, with a goal, we can generate sharing. Because uh, we did not touch that that did much, but we have an OCR built in, so we can OCR on a scoreboard if we can get it in, in the picture of the panoramic camera. Um, but you can also have a highlight detection. We will show that later on. Yes. So based on, the MCL, yeah. on specific locations yeah. of the ball, we can detect automatic highlights and even play automatic audio if you like. Yeah. So in terms of setup, um, common question, the camera itself, ideally eight to 10 meters high above the field of play. So we're looking down. Um, and the, the idea, as Michelle was mentioning earlier, that as much of the uh, pitch as possible and trying to avoid the sky and other things. So we set that up as best we can. Um, distance away from the side of the pitch, we can have it on the side of the pitch, but actually with the X cam, it does have powerful zoom capability. So it can be as far back as 50 meters. Uh, with the surveillance camera, the Hick vision camera, we recommend between naught and 20 meters. Uh, the power itself, uh, not necessarily required if we can get ethernet all the way to the camera. Uh, comes with the AI server, so this is local on site. Uh, which needs installing with a camera. Now, the AI server can also be in, uh, located in the cloud or a hosting center. Yep. But of course, the bandwidth between the camera and, and the server is about yeah, between 60 and 100 megabits. So the venue need to have enough bandwidth to make that possible. Yeah, so yeah, it is possible to host it uh, remotely, the server, but it depends on the bandwidth. And then we need the playout server, which could, as we mentioned earlier, could be in the cloud as well. So as part of Link Matrix, we can provide this as a managed service. Yeah, and also uh, quite recently we added a feature that the server can also output locally an RTSP stream for uh, analytics servers or, or recorders. So we're also working with the local uh, Olympic uh, yeah, technical support team 
And they have their own analytics software that record locally from the IQ server directly to video so they can analyze it in the software. Yeah. So it's my last of my slides, you'd be pleased to hear. So just um, a, a few key features really, and, and, and sort of what differentiates us against uh, others. So one thing we can do is the multi-camera production. So we talk about having the panoramic sitting above the field of play, but you can also have side cameras as well, uh, and you can position these wherever you want to. Um, and the AI will automatically move between the panoramic and the side cameras. So you have that option as well. Um, the automatic highlights and replays and scoreboard overlays all built in as part of the sort of the AI server. So we can detect highlights. We can then do replays. <coughs> so if a goal is scored, you can then do the automatic highlight. Um, so again, we're just trying to make it look and feel <coughs> as much like a professional production as, as possible. Um, then we have the XCAM, which is really providing this extra level of quality, which you know, the broadcast industry really demands it. But we take that quality and we really push it down into our lower products as well. Uh, the OCA overlay. So if there is a scoreboard, we can do this op optical character recognition uh, so you don't have to do it. The other alternative is you can do it manually within Link Matrix if you want to do the scoreboard manually. Um, the fact we can support up to five streams as well is fairly unique to mobile viewpoint. Everything is uh, remotely managed uh, via Link Matrix, so you don't have to go to site. You can even schedule games, so you don't have to be there at the minute while the game is running. Um, and then we have the different packages, light to pro to premium, depending on your needs and, and depending on your budget. And we kind of encourage you if, you know, if you do have an opportunity and you're interested in our technology, then by all means, send us an email, sales at mobileviewpoint.com, and we'll be happy to discuss with you about your specific needs and requirements. So on that note, Michelle, um, we'll come back to the user case at the end. Um, I'm going to pass over to you. So let me just stop sharing. And then what I'm going to do is share my screen. And then we have some videos that I would like to show. So Michelle, if you want to talk us through. Yeah, yeah this are some screen recordings from, uh, from the whole setup. So what you see here is the link matrix we talked about. This is your central platform where you manage your IQ producer systems from. Over here you see already the, um, yeah, some uh, the, the five cutouts, for example. Is actually another unit, and actually when you push on the play button, you can really see the yeah the, the video moving. So normally it are thumbnails, and this helps you to check remotely if everything is running. You see also a statistic below. So this is really your center of the of the management universe. Actually, when you click on the top, now you can even get details of the systems. So this is for everybody for all our WT products. Uh, it is the the way to to manage and control your systems remotely. This also enables you to do settings, as you could see over here. And also it enables you to do a real detailed configuration on your IQ, for example, uh, uploading overlays or even uh, yeah, changing, uh, we'll talk about it, uh, advertisement overlays. So, so this is actually when you uh, go to the Clipper site. So we actually record all your matches uh, automatically. And then you can see over here is that we really also uh, record the, the, the statistics from the player. So we see the players on the right small soccer field moving. And also you see the ball. And we're using that information to do a rule-based detection of highlights. So the dots on, on, the, on, the, on the timeline, as you see over here, are actually a start game, goals, uh, corners, everything we think we detected. And that helps us also to enable you to create automatic summaries of the, of the system. With this clipper tool, as you call it, you can make small cutouts of the video stream, real small clips. Actually, you can also put them all together in one file and then you can pu publish them right away to YouTube or Facebook as a summary of the match. But it also enables uh, yeah, coaches, trainers, actually to make small clips. Here you see that how that, how that works. So you drag uh, the, the sliders and then you can create a clip. And then you can push it directly to your FTP server or you can push it to, an, uh, to a WebDAV server, but you can also download it, you give it a name, and then you will see if you press the export clips button, the, the file is compiled in the background, and it will start now. And now you can upload to YouTube or you can download the video. And this is very convenient if you want to do all during the game already, send a, a highlight like a goal directly to the, to the social media. And you can do more, of course, as you see over here. 
so you can do different clips after each other and after uh, and, and doing all <clears throat> and you're doing half time play the summary Mark is my uh, video disc jockey. <clears throat> yes, I'm the, the mouse jockey. Yeah, this is an, uh, because we record different video streams on the pitch, we also record the full panoramic stream. And um, with the, what we call the WebGL player, actually you're going to do the dewarp on your browser. And as you can see with your mouse, you can then become your own cameraman. So you can now create actually your own video from the mesh or from highlights. It's of course extremely interesting for coaches, trainers, or an analysts who want to an analyze the specific moment in the match, play your own VAR. And actually this, this whole video, what you're now creating is also recorded and you can download it later on. So you can actually create your own, your own live broadcast by playing manual cameraman. But of course, it is uh, like difficult perhaps to see the ball at the time, but it's very interesting for doing specific analytic uh, videos. And of course, the highlights on the timeline helps you to jump to locations in the video where you want to be. And I guess that's the point, isn't it, with the panoramic capture, is that the AI is a, is a cutout of the panoramic and it's yeah. following the action of the ball. But say, for example, something happened further down the pitch, maybe the referee was having an argument, then actually you can then later on go back and see what was happening yeah. on that location or, yeah. or something happened with the crowd and the goalie, you know, so because you're capturing everything and it's all being recorded, you have the ability to go back and look at events later on. Nothing is missed. Yeah, and then uh, over here we're showing the IQ calendar. Of course, here they do are now showing videos to make it easy to, uh, to don't get issues in such a nice uh, presentation as this. But you can also go in real time demo with you on a one-to-one -one session. But over here you see how you schedule matches. So what you do, you select the start uh, date and the start moment. And then also, of course, uh, you can select the duration of the match and you give it a name. And over here you can schedule all your matches. So if you are setting up an, an, a system for 10 or 20 pitches, that enables you to do upfronts, a complete uh, planning of all the matches of the weekend of during the week or during the evening. And then over here you can also define the overlay you want to show. You can send, schedule the destinations, Facebook, YouTube, and um, a decoder, an SDI decoder, for example. And um, if you, and by dragging and dropping from your resources, you're actually creating. So over here you see, I just dragged the YouTube uh, thing to the right. And so now I enable it, it's going to YouTube. And also I can do that with SDI decoders. You can even change the settings of what you want to do with it. So YouTube accepts everything, but for example, for Facebook, you have to go back to 720p. And that's all done in, uh, under the hood in our cloud system uh, using transcoding capabilities we offer you. So over here you see the result. So one Facebook, one local decoder, pressing the plus, and there it is in your schedule. And this is what you can do for multiple systems around the world. And also uh, you can select even different cameras on a, on, a, on a location. For example, we have a customer over here who has 10 pitches and two IQs. So actually you can then use different pitches on the same IQ, but of course not at the same time. You have to do them one by one. And this is what we, uh, what we call actually the, the camera position selector. That's one of the settings. So over here, you can position your other cameras. So the camera position one is the AI uh, camera and uh, the other uh, camera position two, three, and four can have an, an capability of, an, of an, the way you used to do OCR scoring or to get a second stream more zoomed in of the, of the, of the players. But also you can use it just to create a static positions from the pitch and then you switch them manually yourself between those video streams. So over here you're using these small squares you see on the right top to actually point those camera position two, three, and four and if you can control the zoom. And this enables you to set up static uh, cutouts from the panorama to be used in your, your own production if you want. This is the control room uh, tab, and this is actually what you use during the match to keep in track on, on, on the match, and it actually it has also several purposes. One of them is that you can do the score manually and the time manually, if you don't use OCR or highlight detection. So you can, uh, of course, uh, set the name of the, of the player, of the, of the teams. You can uh, change the score and also reset and pause the game time. And also what you can also do over here, if you, 
you can manually create highlights from the match. So if you press the add highlight button, there will be a highlight created on the left and that you can then later on, as you show over here, replay. I think we're going to show that even over here. So when you press on the run highlight, then this highlight will be played direct in the, in the live stream, as you can see over here. And so this is really, the, the, we call it the cockpit for you as a director to still manually uh, create a production. But as I said, this can also be done totally automatic. So we can do automatic replays. We can do the by way by the automatic highlight detection or using the scoreboard. So as soon as we detect that the score goes up one, then we're looking in the moment in the video where the ball more or less went into the goal and then we create a cutout and play that automatically. And last but not least. So yeah, we have one uh, nice new feature created that is actually that we can now replace background parts of the video. So you see on the far end, we replaced some of the, the advertisement boards, but we can also put uh, graphics into the field or in the pitch. And you can see we just uh, make it possible that you still see the players going over it. And of course you can use this for the funny thing like logos. But at the start of the match, you see also that the professional uh, TV production equipment. But also, you can just add other advertisements on the back, as you could see, as we have done as well. But also, it enables you to actually mask out the complete background. We have, of course, sometimes some privacy issues, especially in the Netherlands. There is a big discussion about it. But now you can actually, the whole background, you can create one big uh, long square where you put in some, yeah, some text or some you can make it black, so you mask out the people watching the match which don't want to be uh, live on TV. And, and I think this is a, a, one of the ways that some of the teams can monetize their content, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube doesn't allow you to put adverts in, but no. they will allow you to do overlays. Like yeah, yeah, especially YouTube uh, is very critical on if you are playing your own advertisements in the match. They uh, don't like it and they will take you off on, uh, off air. But of course, they allow that you, of course, film in the background the advertisement boards because that's part of the, of the match. And by adding them artificially, we enable you to monetize more on your matches. Sure. So what I'd like to just, uh, just to sort of finish off with a little bit, really, is a bit of a success story uh, that we've had recently. Uh, just back to my PowerPoint. Um, so Solid Sport, Michelle, perhaps you could talk a bit about yeah, that. Yeah, uh, Solid Sport is a uh, company in Sweden uh, that does a lot of different sports, but one of the big things doing is floorball. If you've never seen it, you can compare, compare it to ice hockey, but not on ice, but on a floor, it's indoor, and they're still using a stick and not the puck, but it's a very small white ball. And actually the goals are in the same position. So it looks like, like ice hockey, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's on the floor. It's very fast, like ice hockey. And due to our capabilities of track the ball, we are, were able to show them that we could automatically produce the matches they now previously did with the cameraman. And uh, we did uh, quite some testing uh, over, the, over the last months. And uh, yeah, I think a few weeks ago, they decided to really go for it. And uh, yeah, we go to do uh, 10 systems to start with. But we have an, an, uh, an horizon of quite a few more. Yep. Because yeah, the goal is to get all the venues where the, where the sports are played, that's all sport producers, to get an automatic camera system. Because you cannot only do floorball, but also in the same location we can do uh, uh, futsal, um, handball, volleyball, whatever. So yeah, for solar sport, it's an ideal way to produce automatic matches. And I think this is one of the customers we focused on for quite a long time. Yeah. And it's, it's an OTT player. So a lot of it's sort of played out over the web um, and they own a platform by which uh, people, clubs, uh, sports clubs, federations, league holders, they can all basically monetize their content. Uh, but we're certainly talking to many people like this you know, so watch this space hopefully for, for more success stories that we'll have shortly. Yeah, and also if you are also a company like Solar Sport, uh, yeah, don't hesitate to contact us because we can show you some more detailed examples how they do it and then uh, even talk about, uh, now, yeah, how we can help you with your perhaps sport we did not do yet, but we can make for you. Sure. Well, the horse racing was people just asking us, can, can we do horse racing? And I think, well, we just need to train the AI in effect. Yeah. So it takes a while to train. It actually doesn't take that long, but it's... Um, yeah, it's yeah the, the, the point with AI is that the more pictures you give it from horses, in this case, the better it gets. So if you do 100 pictures of horses, it starts recognizing horses, but you have to go to the 10,000 pictures to get it really accurate. <laughs> but that's something, of course, we're doing. That's uh, the business we're running every day, is training the AI. And um, yeah. We love to train AI on your specific sports or subject. Great. So we'll move to the questions in a minute. So if you've got any questions, feel free to write them down. Um, if you want to send us an email at sales at mobileviewpoint.com, then I can share these links with you. 
So the top one is we actually have a closed Facebook account uh, where we've got a lot of live streams coming from AX and some of the other clubs. Because we don't own the media, we can't open it up. So you need to request to be a member, but we can do that. But uh, we can share this uh, link by email uh, and then you can join. And the nice thing about that, there's no marketing, there's no whistles and bells. It's, it's, it is what it is, you know, yeah. it's like. Yeah, you, you see what it does. You see uh, some videos with the overlays, so you can see uh, that we detect the ball. And also you will sometimes see that you detect something else by accident, but that's what we use to train the system on. Yeah. So uh, on that note, that concludes the presentation. So uh, let's have a quick look at the questions. Um, well, Kevin at the top, what is the focal length on the camera and the IQX? Uh, tough question. To yeah, start. I think the, you, for the IQX, you have different lenses available. The, the smallest one is three millimeter. It's really a wide angled lens. And then I go to down to seven. And with the zoom camera, it's actually between three and 12 millimeters. The IQX Cam Pro. Great, I'm glad you answered that. Um, what is the second connector on the camera for? So I guess you've got- That is if you don't have power over it, you can just power it just directly with a power supply. Right. So if you, uh, for example, want to use fiber as a connectivity, then you don't have PoE. So then you can use this connector to, to power it. And the audio is actually done over IP. So the box actually also takes the audio, but it gets, it gets in via IP. Okay. Um, what type of lens can be used? C mount, 84 mount? It is, well, uh, no, no, it, it is an, uh, an M12 or a CS mount lens. So B4 mount, of course, on a real big broadcast camera. No, it's a CS mount or an, uh, 12, yeah, we can do many mounts, but the standard is 12 millimeter or CS, but you can, of course, also do a B40, or no, uh, 40 millimeter mountings. I guess the point is we do all that. And yeah, because you have to take in mind that the CCDs in these cameras are, are designed and they are coming from Sony for, for the more luxury 4K handicams. So that's the, also the, the level you have to think about. Um, Gordon, do you have examples of your broadcast cameras, please? Um, we're making them, aren't we? Yeah, we're making them, yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, the, the true yep. story is, of course, that the camera was already available for some time. But uh, due to Corona, we, um, and we also were, of course, caused by Corona. We had, of course, also a uh, change in, uh, in interest from customers. So uh, produ producing sport, that interest dropped really to a minus 10, I would almost say. So we also obligated to pause the development a little bit of the IQX cam. So we had to focus on some other yeah, pr projects and products. So like the, the Trolley Live that people really demanded. But we picked it up, of course, uh, some time ago again. So there was some delay in really bringing it to market. But actually, we are shipping this week to the US uh, quite a few sets. We're going to get one live analysis on a test pitch. We are shipping also to Spain, I think. So quite, I think in the next coming weeks, we're going to see real pitches from real customers going live on this camera. Yeah. And, the, and we get asked a lot for examples with the side cameras too. Yeah. So again, we've got examples, but again, they're with the sort of surveillance type of camera. Uh, but it'd be nice to see it with the... So the X-Cam yeah, itself... It's good that we yeah. talk about it, yeah. Mark. If you yeah. want to do side camera, you cannot do it with, with the security cameras because the problem with security cameras, they are never in sync. Yeah, of course, when they are together in one house and they are sync. But if you put the same camera in, in, in the same pitch, they start floating and it's impossible to get them. Uh, and actually the manufacturer yeah. don't want to help us on that level. So you need the IQX cam if you want to do multiple cameras along the pitch. It might be worth just mentioning that. So we got the, the four camera version, but we also got the two camera version and the one camera. Yeah, so if you talk about multi-camera, then you put up the four camera or two camera in the middle, depending on the location. And then you do the single camera version on, on, on the sides or behind the goal, for example. There we go. Uh, Gordon, what happens when the puck is hidden by boards or in a five-a-side soccer net? Now, there, uh, of course, then the AI loses the, 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 the puck or the ball or any, any object you're tracking. And then, of course, we made some rules what to do. So what you mainly do, of course, you wait uh, where, where, where the puck or the ball disappeared because it will be in throw-in or the, the, the goalie picks it up. And then, uh, of course, uh, we also, in the meantime, scanning the whole pitch if there are other pucks or balls appearing because there is a throw-in from somewhere else. And then we move like a real cameraman to the new position as soon as we see it appearing. Yeah. Uh, do the units support H.265 encoding and decoding? Yeah, yeah it is H.264 and H.265, but we prefer H.265 because it's much more efficient and gives a higher quality. But uh, in the end, you don't have to do anything. We do 8265 under the hood. I mean, yeah, of course, if you want to receive it on a decoder, it, yeah, you need to have a capable decoder. But we do both. Yep. And the good to know is that the security cameras go up to 60 megabits and the IQX cam goes up to 100 megabits. 
so that gives you a bit of an idea of the quality. Uh, can you show the camera up close one more time? Yes, yeah, I guess I before we had the presentation running. Yeah, yeah, I can. I've got so my. It, it might be interesting just to mention when Michelle does that that our other AI technology is the V Pilot. So the V Pilot which we could show in a minute. But this is the camera, let's talk about the camera. So first. this is uh, the cooling location. So the, it's kind of air conditioning in the unit. So uh, we heat it up by default to get rid of moisture. Also, if it rains, that uh, the rain vapors from the lenses. And, uh, and actually the mounting is officially like this. Huh? So it is mounted like this. So, um, and it also has cooling inside. So we actually cooling uh, oh, the lenses. Because if you have a CCD that heats up, you get more noise. So there's actually cooling inside. And um, yeah, so it's a kind of small air conditioning, uh, as I would say it. It's yeah, normally always powered. Um, yeah, it's, it's full aluminium. And, and actually, what you also can end with it, I will put the camera down. On top over here, there will be holes in the production version that you actually can screw on an, an extra plate as a kind of rain cover. So, of course, we vaporize automatically the. Sure, it might be worth showing the AI stuff as well behind the scenes. AI yeah, stuff? So, oh, this? You mean. Yes. Uh, yes. So, I was just going to mention vPilot. So vPilot is our other AI platform, which might be interesting. So we actually have a five camera setup here in the studio, but again, no camera people. And the AI is actually driving all the different cameras and deciding all the shots, uh, which might be interesting as well. So that's a, another AI platform, which we call vPilot that we've developed here at Mobile Viewpoint. Yes. Um, yeah, this is, it was, was it good. Can you show the camera up one close one more time? I think we did. Yep. So, um, and where is the encoder installed? Uh, no, and the, the camera itself encodes the video. So it takes the, the video from the lenses and encodes it, of course. And um, then in the, in the IQ server, those streams are decoded. And then, of course, the virtual uh, uh, yeah, uh, part is taken out of it. And that's recoded again, H265 or H264, depends a bit on your wish. And then sent to YouTube, Facebook, or to your decoder or yeah, any other uh, recorder. Yep. I actually had a customer who phoned me. He, he, he wants to use a an, uh, an, uh, security network video recorder for taking the streams directly from the IQ server locally. And that's going to work as well, of course, as long as uh, we support. And then they can just stream. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, scrub through the video as and when. Yeah, yeah with their own local uh, security system. Great. Well, I think that might conclude all of our questions, uh, which is great. Oh, no. No. Uh, can commentary be added to the stream from venue? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can, uh, we have an, uh, for the security camera, it really has an analog audio input. So you can really plug in your camera directly in the analog part or take a wireless microphone, but it's an analog input. And this one has an, has an IP input. So you get from us a uh, small box, it actually has an audio input and then it puts it on IP and then the camera takes care of synchronizing your audio with, with, the, with the images from the, from the video. Everything is, is time synced. So your small device to your microphone is time synced with the, with the images taken by the, by, the, by the camera. Because you can imagine AI takes a bit of time. So you need yeah, maximum two seconds to really find the ball and track everything. And then it goes out li yeah, live two seconds late. So we also then synchronize the audio with it. And actually two seconds latency compared to some of our Betsy, yeah, it seems to be very fast. So yeah. uh, I think it's quite long still, but uh, yeah, but in yeah. the end, uh, yeah, if you, if you watch it uh, at home, then uh, the chance that you hear the neighbor also yelling is yeah. small. I hope that's true. Yeah, for sure. Great. And I guess on, on the commentary side, is it worth mentioning that we're actually going to be implementing a, a, an ability to do remote? Yeah, yeah. We, I think the ability to use a WebRTC uh, instance on your browser at home, so that you can do commentary from home, that's and with the same reason. So then we also time sync that. Uh, to the to the system, and then we have an extra buffer in the in the link matrix cloud system to buffer your stream to get it in sync with your web RTC audio from your home. Right. Well, I think that generally does conclude our question. So it is possible Hello? today to already add audio like that way, but it's not in sync. So that's uh, the true story. Uh, oh, there is one more question. What is minimum internet connection needed? Now, if you have everything on site, so everything is done on site, so the big streams from the camera go to the server locally, and then it goes out, and then it's your quality demand. You can send the stream from 500 kilobit all the way to 20 megabit. But I think when you look at the Facebook videos, they are all on 4 megabits because that's what Facebook maximum allows. And that's on the, on, on the lower edge, I would say. Don't go lower than 4 megabits because then it, then it gets annoying, yep. I think. Yeah, I agree. Good stuff. All right, well... I think that concludes the webinar. So one thing I would just like to say is to thank 
everybody for joining uh, this morning, um, at least this morning in the Netherlands. Uh, we're doing the same again this afternoon. Uh, it'll be a repeat. But, uh, you know, just watch this space, really. So if you're interested in our technology, please contact us, sales at mobileviewpoint.com. We will be doing other webinars uh, over a period of time. So if this is of, in of interest, then feel free just to uh, sign up to our newsletter and we can uh, send you more information. If you want to see any of the other links, the Facebook links or the YouTube links, we can make that available too. So on that note, I'd like to thank Michelle for joining yes, us. Yes, thanks, Mark. And uh, don't hesitate to ask for a one-to-one -one, uh, session sure. about uh, this subject. Absolutely. Uh, so everyone out there, thank you so much for joining this morning. Uh, stay safe. And until next time, goodbye.